And welcome back to another exciting week of Racing in the Draft. My name is Mark. Thanks for joining. Wow. We're through halfway through the regular season. 13 weeks in, 13 weeks to go, then 10 weeks for the playoffs. Man, time is flying. And, I mean, other than, I guess, the All-Star Race, Martinsville, and maybe Richmond, the racing has been absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't be more pleased so far with the next-gen car. Like I said, had a couple little hiccups, but I think all in all, we're batting probably 90% so far for the year, and very, very happy. Um, hopefully, you did well this past weekend with the All-Star Race. It uh, was fairly predictable, um, and the track really did exactly what everybody thought it was going to do. Um, other than everybody was hopeful that the next-gen car would add some fun and excitement to the track. Uh, I mean, other than NASCAR trying to manufacture some drama at the end, and Brian Blaney not being smartest, or not knowing the rules, I think he's smart, but uh, not knowing the rules, that, uh, yeah, if you take the yellow and not the checkered, the race isn't over. Um... Lots of controversy. You can go find lots of channels other than this one that will talk all about the fun drama or go listen to Door, Door Bumper Clear or Dale Jr.'s podcast. Uh, the Dale Jr. podcast with Denny Hamlin is really interesting and really informative. Make sure you check that out. Um, whether you like, loathe, or don't like um, Denny Hamlin, um, it's, it's well worth the listen. Uh, I think it gives you a lot of insight into... The mind of Denny Hamlin and the thought process, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm on the fence with Denny. I don't I don't I go back and forth on how much I like him or don't like him, uh, but I guess that's probably true with most of the stars of this sport. Uh, they have their good days and bad days, and have comments, and you go, uh, was that really necessary? But you know, it's kind of cool. It's great. It's a great podcast. Make sure you check it out. But either way, we are here to talk about. Uh, NASCAR, DraftKings, fantasy racing, and all of those things combined, and a little bit of news and things of that nature. But either way, the All-Star Race, like I said, was kind of predictable, um, or at least I thought it was, um, and actually ended up doing fairly well. Hopefully you did if you decided to play DraftKings. Uh, there was no fantasy NASCAR Live, but that's back this week, so if you have lineups to set in that, make sure you set that and you know get yourself some bragging rights. By the way, let's take a look at the optimal lineups from that all-star race. Uh, Ryan Blaney, who I said in both of my videos was absolutely underpriced uh, and a huge value. Uh, I mean, pricing was super, super low anyways for this race, which it should have been. Um, but either way, Ryan Blaney just stunk up the show for the most part. I mean, 84 of 140 laps led over, led, led over half of them, 25% um, of the fast laps. Um, so, you know, as predicted, I thought there would be at least one Dominator. I did like Ryan Blaney from the jump. Um, but, I mean, I also said the rest of it was going to come from place differential. And sure enough, two of them were came from the open race, uh, Daniel Suarez and Chris Buescher. Daniel Suarez ran an absolute race for Daniel Suarez and that track house team. Um... Danny Hamlin coming from 16th to finish second. Austin Sendrick uh, was my one surprise that I didn't think would do that well, that actually did well. Um, Alex Bowman starting 20th. I knew that team would get things together and made it up to six. Chris Buescher coming from the open made it up to eighth. And those were your best points uh, getters. And pretty much those were the top uh, optimal lineup guys. By the way, we had $3,500 left. I mean, it was... It, the pricing was, or the uh, lineups, as I thought, were going to run very, very similar to a road course or super speedway, where dominators were not going to be the the key. Um, it would, you know, you definitely probably had to have Ryan Blaney to make the optimal lineup. You still could have probably cashed if you had replaced, you know, a, a Joey Logano with him or a Brad K. But either way, Ryan Blaney was a key to winning some of these lineups. And pretty much, you could, as you could see, the points really don't change a whole lot from AJ Allmendinger to Denny Hamlin. I mean, 
19 points separating those guys. So any combination of them would have put you in uh, probably a winning situation. But either way, um, it was a great race. Hopefully you did well. If not, let's see if we can get you back on a winning track with a the longest race of the year. Four hours. Make sure you take a nap probably before so you can watch the whole race, but usually maybe NASCAR turns into nap car. Um, so you can take a nap between lap 200, 300. But either way, it's a long race. It's grueling. Um, high speeds. Not super high speeds, but high speeds. High tire wear. This track has now been 16 years since it's been repaved. It's really starting to get um, to a point to where tire wear is becoming more and more of an issue. Um, hopefully they don't go and repave it. I like high tire wear tracks. It brings a lot more to the uh, ability of the driver, the ability of the crew chiefs to figure out what, when, and how many, you know, do you two tires, four tires, those types of things. Uh, some of these new paved tracks, it's tire wear is just not there. Um, so get rid of the PJ1, get rid of the resin, just let the tire wear work itself in. These guys will figure it out. That's just my opinion on it. By the way, we are at Charlotte. They are at a home race this weekend for the 60th Coca-Cola 600. I don't think it's been the the Coke 600 for that long. It was like the World 600 or something for a while. But either way, this is the 60th year that they are running the 600 lap race or 600 mile race here at Charlotte. Like I said, Coke Cola 600, the track type is an intermediate one and a mile, one and a half mile quad oval track. It's like the grandfather of all mile and a half tracks. It's the oldest it's the one that everybody kind of tried to replicate when they started making all these cookie cutters. But it's a mile and a half, 24 degrees in the banks. Um, race length is 400 laps. Dominator points will be something we will need to hone in on when it's 280, uh, 100 of laps led, 180 of fast laps. It is lap wise one of the longest next to the Bristol Fall Race and the Martinsville Fall Race, which are both 500 laps. So when we're looking at our track comparisons, very similar to the last couple of races, Kansas, Las Vegas, Texas, Homestead, all mile and a half. So now Homestead is a true oval um, where Las Vegas, Kansas, and Texas are the uh, either D-shaped oval or the quad oval or however you want it, all the oval. Um, not a traditional oval, but either way those are our comparison tracks when we're looking at uh, Past history and those types of things, but the real reason you guys came was let's break down this driver by driver comparisons um, I will go through Kyle Larson in a little more detail and then kind of cruise through the rest So, you know kind of what we're talking about if you're new to this channel and kind of what you're looking at It's probably fairly simple and explanatory, but uh, either way Hey, if you are new, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, that would help me out a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, but either way, so we have this week's paint scheme over here to the left. That's pretty obvious. Uh, their name, their pricing for DraftKings. And I go from highest price to lowest price. We do not know their starting spot because they still have practice and qualifying, which will happen on Saturday. And then uh, on Sunday, I will do an updated video. Usually I go live with that video so I can take questions and comments. So make sure you tune in for that if you have any questions or comments about your lineups or who you're looking at potentially placing a wager on or your fantasy live uh, NASCAR.com fantasy game. But either here, so right here in this part here, we have the number of starts or if there is nothing here, it is of the last five oval races at Charlotte. So they did do two oval races in 2020 because of COVID. And other than that, because of the roval being in the fall, we usually typically only have one oval style race at Charlotte a year. Either way, Kyle Larson missed both of those in 2020. So he only has three out of the last five starts where he does have one win one top five, 
two top 10s, two top 20s, and he averaged a 69.7 DraftKings average, 13.7 average finish for those three starts. And the last race, which would have been last year's uh, Coca-Cola 600, he finished first. And in this over here to the right is the total number of times that he has raced on the oval track where he has one win, three top fives, five top tens, and seven top 20s. So at a glance, if you think I happen to go too fast or whatever and you're trying to follow along or just want to know the information, that's what we're looking at inside this box. So next in line here, we've got Kyle Busch at 11,100. Oh, this is the power ranking. So this takes into account the latest trend. So the last 10 races that NASCAR has run, uh, including the dirt, including not including the all-star race, but including all tracks, uh, road courses and everything is compiled into the, the latest trend. It also looks at, looks at uh, the other tracks that we're comparing to. So the Las Vegas, Texas, um, Kansas, and Miami Homestead track, it compiled into that. And then we look at the last five races here at Charlotte. So that all gets compiled together. That spits out a number that I've put some weights on different things. And it gives me a power ranking of number three for Kyle Busch. Now this is all pre-qualifying and this number typically will change once they qualify and we have their starting spots because that will lead us to place differential points, which plays a significant part into DraftKings, along with the dominator of leading laps and having the most fast laps. So Kyle Busch, number two on that power ranking, priced at 11,100. And in the last five races, he does have one win, four top fives, four top tens, four top 20s. He does lead everyone in DraftKings average for the last five races at 82.5. And he has an 8.2 average finish. He did finish third in last year's 600. He's raced on the oval 33 times with one win, 15 top 20s, 20 top 10s, and 22 top 20s. So hopefully that's pretty explanatory. So we'll start to cruise along through the rest of these guys. Uh, I love the paint schemes for uh, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, also thank you for all those who have served uh, in our military and first responders and all of the things that keep our country safe. And uh, my thoughts and prayers also go to uh, the families down in Texas. What a horrific event. But we're talking racing, so not to dwell on that. Uh, Chase Elliott, 10,700. First on the power ranking. He does have one win in the last five races on the Oval. And has a record of four top fives, four top tens, and five top 20s. 65.6 uh, DraftKings average over those five races. And a best of 4.2 average finish. He finished second here in last year's Coke 600. Tenth, or ten total starts on the oval with one win, five top tens, six top, five top fives, six top tens, and eight top twenties. Denny Hamlin, 10,500, eighth on the power ranking. And I was shocked to learn this, that Denny doesn't have a win at the oval in Charlotte. I would have sworn that Denny had won a race on the oval, but... You know, stats don't lie, and uh, Denny does, does not have a win here in Charlotte on the Oval. I'm not even sure he has one on the road course. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily need the win to finish well, and Denny has two top fives, three top tens, and three top twenties in the last five races here at Charlotte, and a 45.1 DraftKings average, 11.8 average finish. He finished seventh here in last year's Coca-Cola 600, and 30 total starts to his resume with 10 top fives, 19 top tens, and 24 top 20s. Martin Truex Jr., 10,200, fifth on our ranking for this week, uh, does have one win in the last five starts here at Charlotte, and two top fives, four top tens, and four top 20s in the last five races, a 63.6 DraftKings average and a 9.6 average finish. He did finish 29th here in last year's 600. 30 total starts with three wins to his record, 18 top fives, 14 top tens, and 20 top 20s. William Byron, $10,000, fourth on the rankings. And 
In the last five races here, he has one top five, two top tens, three top 20s, a 25.8 DraftKings average, and a 17.0 average finish. He finished fourth here in the Oak 600 last year. Five total starts with pretty much the same stats. Um, I do like William Byron this week, depending on how qualifying and practice goes. Uh, Ross Chastain, uh, one of the hottest drivers going right now in 2022. Uh, 9,800, seventh on our ranking system. Four total starts in the last five races here at Charlotte. No top 20s. Um, a six, whopping 6.7 DraftKings average. 29.8 average finish. I think he bests all of those this week at uh, Charlotte. He finished 37th here in the 600 last year. Um, four total starts in the Cup Series, but he does have four. So I do add this to some of the drivers that we don't have a lot of stats for. This yellow over here means he's got four starts in the Xfinity Series. And then these are his stats for those four races where he has one top five, one top 10, and three top 20s. Still not great numbers for us here at Charlotte, but this year's completely different. Um, he's best his average at almost every track he's raced at this year. And unless he gets into trouble early, I expect him to be somewhat of a contender, probably easily getting himself into a top five situation. All right, Tyler Reddick. Um, if there's a breakout time and a chance to get a win here, and I say this every week, but Tyler Reddick is due. He, he's raced extremely well, just had some bad luck. I mean, he should have been a shoe in from the open but they had a steering issue and had to change something in the steering, which caused him to start from last in the open. And just, I mean, he got his way all his way all the way up to third, maybe even second at some points. He may have been led once or twice, but either way, he made it all the way back up there and then just wrecked himself trying too hard and the tires had kind of worn out. And yeah, and Tyler Reddick missed the all-star race. Um, didn't see that one coming. Would have. Probably, if I put some money on it, I probably would have put a de decent amount on him making it from the Open to the All-Star Race. Uh, good thing I didn't, but uh, either way. And just like that, with the magic of uh, editing video, I was able to change this 4 to a 3. Um, I just overlooked it. But Tyler Reddick has three starts in the Cup Series here at Charlotte in the last five. Uh, three total. Uh, with no top fives, two top tens, and three top 20s, a 37.1 DraftKings average, and a 10.7 average finish. He finished ninth here in the 600 last year. Uh, and in the Xfinity Series, he has three starts with one win, two top fives, two top tens, and two top 20s. Alex Bowman, next in line here, 9,300, sixth on our ranking system this week. One top five, three top tens, three top 20s, and the last four. Five races here at Charlotte Oval. 14.4, uh, sorry, 46.7 DraftKings average and a 14.4 average finish. He finished fifth here in last year's Oak 600. 10 total starts to his resume with one top five, three top tens, and four top 20s. Ryan Blaney, 9,100, your all star winner. Ninth on the ranking system, two top fives, two top tens, and four top 20s, a 37.0 DraftKings average, and a 13.8 average finish over the last five races here at Charlotte. Finished 13th last year here at Charlotte. 10 total starts with two top fives, three top tens, and seven top 20s. Next grouping here starts with Joey Logano, 8,900, 13th on our ranking system. And in the last five races here at Charlotte, he does have one top five, two top tens, three top 20s, 34.1 DraftKings average and a 12.2 average finish. He finished 17th here in the Coke 600 last year. 23 total starts here at Charlotte with two wins, six top fives, 11 top tens, and 18 top 20s. Kurt Busch, our last winner from a points paying event at Kansas, 8,600, who was just looked really good and he actually looked really good in the all-star race also so potentially Kurt Busch may be somebody to kind of keep an eye on um especially priced at 8600 that may be a little on the low side coming off of his win momentum is huge 11 
on our ranking system this week and in the last five races here at Charlotte, he has one top five, three top tens, three top twenties, a 24.9 DraftKings average, a 17.2 average finish. He did finish close to last at the Coke 600 last year. I think actually it was last. Uh, 38th and 37 total starts here at Charlotte with one win, eight top fives, 15 top tens, and 22 top twenties. Christopher Bell, 8400, 14th on our ranking. Christopher Bell has actually been running really well over the last four or five races. So definitely kind of somebody to keep an eye on or think about as we kind of move forward. Um, see how his luck continues this week. Uh, three total starts here at Charlotte on the Oval. Uh, no top fives, one top 10, one top 20, a 22.0 DraftKings average and an 18.3 average finish. He finished 24th here last year. And in the Xfinity series, he does have two starts where he has one top five, one top 10, one top 20. Austin Dillon, 8,216th on our ranking system. In the last five races here at Charlotte on the Oval, he has two top 10s, three top 20s, a 14.1 DraftKings average, a 19.4 average finish. He finished sixth here last year in the 600. 13 total starts here on the oval portion of Charlotte with one win, one top five, five top 10s, and 10 top 20s. Next in line here, Kevin Harvick, 12th on our ranking system, $8,000 on DraftKings. Uh, and in the last five races here at Charlotte, he does have one top five, four top tens, four top 20s, a 42.0 DraftKings average, and a 15.2 average finish. He has he did finish 10th in the Coke 600 last year. 39 total starts with three wins, nine top 20s, or nine top fives, 20 top tens, and 29 top 20s. So I went back and looked and I did fix the Kurt Busch stat because I thought it was strange that Kurt Busch had fewer starts than Kevin Harvick because that's typically not the case. Kurt Busch does have 40 total starts. I did have the rest of his stats correct, but 40 starts for Kurt Busch here at Charlotte. All right, next in line here, Daniel Suarez, 7,800, 22nd on our ranking system. But I tell you what, Daniel might actually start to be coming around here. He finished really, really, and ran really well in the open race and in the all-star race last weekend and had a decent run at kansas or had decent speed at camp and say his finish was all that great but either way I, daniel suarez may be sneaky this week um so keep an eye on daniel suarez and his amigos uh 7800 in the last five races here at charlotte only has two top 20s a 20.9 DraftKings average and a 21.0 average finish he finished 15th here in Race of last year, seven total starts here at Charlotte with one top 10, five top 20s. Eric Jones, 7,600, 21st on our ranking system. And Eric has only one top 20 in the last five races here at Charlotte. A 15.3 DraftKings average, a 22.6 average finish. Finished 16th here in the Coke 600 last year. Seventh, seven total starts with one top 10, five top 20s. All right, next to line here, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 7,400, 17th on our ranking system. Ricky runs actually fairly well here at Charlotte, so definitely keep an eye on him also. Uh, in the last five races, he has two top fives, three top 10s, four top 20s, a 36.0 DraftKings average, and a pretty impressive 11.2 average finish. He finished 12th here in the 600 last year. 17 total starts to his resume with two top fives, three top tens, and 19 top 20s. Uh, Chase Briscoe is 7,223rd on our ranking system. He only has one start, which was the 600 last year, where he finished 23rd and had 17 DraftKings points. Uh, in the Xfinity series, he also does not have a top five, but does have one top 10 and four top 20s out of four attempts. Austin Sendrick, 7,100. This will be his first start on the Oval in the Cup series for Austin. Um, so let's look at his Xfinity stats since we don't have any Cup stats. Four Xfinity starts with two top fives, three top 10s, and four top 20s. 
All right, next in line here, Bubba Wallace, 6,900, 24th on our ranking system. And, and Bubba, Bubba's one of those, another one that's just, can't find any luck to save his life, especially on pit road. Um, his pit crew is just, he's been running well and just has issues on pit road and it's costing him finishing position. So they can clean that up, but Wallace could be somebody to really start to take a look at. Um, so take that for what it is. But either way, the last five races here at Charlotte, he has two top 20s, a 16.4 DraftKings average, a 26.2 average finish, finished 14th year in the race last year. Five total starts with those two top 20s. So, Bob Wallace's crew needs to help him out a little bit. Uh, Chris Buescher, 6,700, 18th on our ranking system. And in the last five starts here at Charlotte, he does have two top 10s, three top 20s, a 33.7 DraftKings average, 15.2 average finish. He finished eighth here in the Coke 600 last year. Uh, nine total starts with two top 10s and six top 20s. Brad Keselowski, 6,600. Oh, um, hey, I almost feel for Brad. Not really. Um, he, he owns his own, or he's partnered up with uh, Roush Fenway for a race team, so I don't feel too bad for him. Um, but either way, this has been a tough year for Brad. Lots of getting over some growing pains, to say the least. 15th on the ranking system. I do like Brad's price this week so let's see where he practices and qualifies but in the last five races here at charlotte he does have one win two top fives three top tens four top 20s a 53.3 DraftKings average and an 8.4 average finish he finished 11th here in the race last year 22 total starts to brad's resume here at charlotte with two wins five top ten, fives ten top tens and 18 top 20s Next in line here, Eric Almarola, 6,500, 19th on our ranking system. And in the last five races here at Charlotte, he only has two top 20s. A 28.2 DraftKings average and a 16.4 average finish. He did finish 22nd here in last year's 600. 16 total starts here at the Oval in Charlotte with one top five, six top 10s and 10 top 20s. Justin Haley, 6,326th on our ranking system. Keep an eye out for Justin also. He's been running much, much better over the last two or three races. Um, so keep an eye on Justin. His stats do not equate to how well he's been running lately. Um, and there's a lot of, what have you done for me lately, involved in DraftKings, to say the least, and in NASCAR. Uh, but 26 on the ranking, one start with no top 20s. 16.0 DraftKings average, a 28th last year in this race. Um, so let's look at his Xfinity stats. Three races, three starts in the last five races here in Xfinity, where he has one top five, one top 10, and two top 20s. Keep an eye out for Justin. He may be a sneaky pick this week. Cole Custer, 6,200, 29 on our power ranking. Three starts in the last five races here at Charlotte. On the oval with one top 20 a 28.2 DraftKings average a 17.3 average finish he finished 21st here in coke 600 last year so let's look at his xfinity stats where he has raced three of the last five and has one top five two top tens two top 20s harrison burton 6131 on our power ranking this week we don't have any cup stats because he's never started the cup car here at the 600 and this will be the longest race harrison has ever run um in his so far nascar career uh let's look at his affinity stats similar to Cole custers but one last race two starts here at charlotte on in the oval in the Xfinity series with one top five, two top tens, two top 20s. Noah Gregson, $6,000, 32nd on our ranking system. I mean, this Harrison Burton, Noah Gregson, we're gonna have to see how they practice and qualify to see if we have any interest in them. Um, I think I probably like Noah better than I like Harrison, but let's see how he races or practices and qualifies and how he races in the Xfinity race. Harrison is not running, Noah is. Uh, so let's look at his previous Xfinity starts where he has three 
Uh, but he does in those three races, he does have one top five, one top ten, and two top twenties. Michael McDowell, 5,820th on the ranking system, and in the last five races here at Charlotte, he has four top 20s. A 23.4 DraftKings average and a 20.8 average finish. He finished 20th here in last year's race. Um, so it depends on where he practices and qualifies. If he's starting worse than 20th, if he's starting 30th or something, that might be somebody to take a look at to get inside the top 10. And he's actually been running fairly well as of recent. So keep an eye on Michael. Uh, 22 total starts here at Charlotte with five top 20s. And we continue on this with uh, Taz Grala with no experience, 5,600, at least no experience in the Cup Series, uh, and only one start in the Xfinity Series, 34th on the ranking system. And I mean, he's running the money train uh, in the 50. So let's see, in the Xfinity Series, he has one race where he finished in the top 10, not top five. So, depends on where he practices and qualifies, but this is going to be a long race. This will be the longest race Kaz Grala has ever run also. Same thing with Noah Gregson, Harrison Burton, all those guys. I've never raced a race this long. 400 laps, and it should take about... All right, next in line here, Ty Dillon, 5,400, 30th on the ranking system. Three starts in the last five here at Charlotte with one top 20. A 30.2 DraftKings average and a 20.3 average finish. He did not race in the Oak 600 last year. And six total starts here at the Charlotte Oval with one top 20. Ryan Priest, 5,200, 28th on our ranking system. Four total starts here for Ryan Priest. And he has a 15.8 DraftKings average and a 26.0 average finish. Has never finished inside the top 20. Um, yeah, so... Not sure about Ryan Priest this weekend. All right, next in line here, Todd Gillen coming from the Truck Series up straight up to the Cup Series. 33rd on our ranking system, $5,000, and this will be his first start at the Oval in Charlotte. So let's look at his truck experience where he has four starts in the Truck Series with one top five, three top tens, and three top 20s. Check out practice and qualifying for that, and check back with me on Sunday and I break down the qualifying and practice and gotta go through these stats in light detail. Uh, Corey LaJoy, 4,927th on our ranking system and in the last five starts here at Charlotte, he has three top 20s, a 6.7 DraftKings average and a 33.3 average finish. Uh, finished 19th year in the race last year. Seven total starts here for Corey with three top 20s. Josh Blicky, 4,800, um, 36 on the ranking system, two starts with a 35.5 average finish, 8.5 DraftKings average. Um, yeah, not, we're getting to the point where I'm not really looking at many of these guys. BJ McLeod, 4,600, finished 31st here in the race last year. Cody Ware, 4,500, finished 30th in this race last year. So, eh, doubtful I even look at these those two guys all right now let's take a look at some past optimal lineups and potentially some guys that we might might kind of clue us in on what we need to hone in on so let's look at the charlotte oval tracks from last year 2020 and the 2019 race all right so last year 400 laps we had one dominator being kyle larson who stumped this show up with 327 laps led out of 400 that's a dominating performance. Um, 69 fast laps, started first, finished first. Yeah, it was it was a it was a nap car type of event. Unless you're a Kyle Larson fan, which I am, so I enjoyed it. But uh, for anybody else that was not a Kyle Larson fan, it was news fest. Um, but we are probably looking for two place differential guys, two value guys, um, along with that dominator. So. Uh, and, no, I think we need to hone in on probably two or two to three place differentials um, and two guys that are going to probably start somewhere in the top 10 and finish in the top 10. Um, same thing down here at the Charlotte uh, Oak 600 in 2020. We had two dominators, you can kind of say. Alex Bowman and Martin Truex Jr. 
completing a bulk of the laps with over 100 fast laps. Um, so kind of two dominators there. I mean, Kurt Busch didn't do too, too badly other than he started up front, so that's probably where those lead laps came um, from was people probably didn't pressure him in that first segment. Uh, but we had um, two value picks and two place differentials. So, I mean, once again, we're looking for one to two dominators, two place differential, two value guys, and, uh, you know, one or two guys that are going to start in the top 10, finish in the top 10. All right, the shorter race at Charlotte in 2020 was about half the distance, 208 laps, uh, where Kevin Harvick led the most laps and dominated a decent amount of the race. Uh, but Chase Elliott, starting in 19th, came up to win the race. Uh, we had uh, two place differentials, three value picks, and two, I mean, really only one guy that started in the top 10 and finished in the top 10, but only two guys that finished in the top five. So, I mean, once again, kind of two dominators, two place differentials, and two good finishing spots is really where I think we need to hone in on. And the 2019 600, uh, Two dominators, Martin Truex and Kyle Busch, leading almost 200 laps, almost half the race. Uh, four place differential drivers uh, that moved up at least 10 spots. Three value picks. So I think, once again, I think we kind of honed in on those two dominators and at least two place differentials and two guys that'll end up finishing up five or six. That kind of, I mean, kind of consistency here. We're looking for, you know, that one or two dominators. Um, two finishing spots and two real solid place differentials to get ourselves into a winning situation. All right, uh, I come back Sunday, we break down practice, we break down qualifying, uh, we break down all the fun stuff, we put it all into the um, simulation and we kind of get spit out some new numbers. So we're really gonna have a breakdown on who we think could easily be dominators, who might be great value picks, and who potentially is going to finish well and who's going to finish well coming from the back of the pack. Uh, more likely, we're going to have a couple guys that will um, wreck during practice or have issues and not qualify or qualify poorly that will easily work on their car all afternoon and evening on Sunday that we can really hone in on for those place differentials. So my goal is to be back with you guys live on Sunday right after the Indy 500, uh, with plenty of time to lock in our drivers for the Coke 600. So probably around three-ish is my guess. So I'm hoping to kind of watch the Indy 500, kind of get all my notes ready for, for you guys, and then break it down and go through that. So come back on Sunday, check check out the uh, live video. Make sure you, if you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, make sure you have those ready to go. I'll be more than happy to try to answer them and remember, the advice is free so don't shoot the guy who's giving you free information all right see you on sunday uh enjoy the weekend um there is a chance of uh, weather all weekend uh we've got to hit the springtime in north carolina where you know you never know what the hot weather is going to bring that occasional afternoon thunderstorm so um, we'll, we'll kind of update the weather also on Sunday as we get closer to race time. We look forward, I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great weekend up until then. And thank you all for your services. Um, and it's the most important reason for Memorial Day weekend. Remember those who have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice. So thank you for those who have served and are currently serving. Have a great weekend. Talk to you on Monday. Get a good deep breath. Get ready to roll here. Only about one thing tonight. Get the W, so got to be around the end to do that. Get ready to roll tonight, boys. Go have some fun. Don't get me any more fired up than I already am. All the way to the checkered. You are fine. Nobody's got to run. Check it back, baby! Hell yeah! Proud there, Mac. Good job, pal. Thanks, man. Good job, all day. Great work, my man. Great work. He's putting yourself in position to win our share, right? We got one back today, brother. Good job. 10 for Great job, guys. Excellent work, my man. Excellent work. Thank you. Man, that's awesome. Set out with a goal. We got it here, bud. Thank you very much. Really proud of you, man. Drove your butt off tonight. 
We had to pass this car here, bud. Probably killed our deal there. Just feel like I gave one away. Yeah, boys! Way to rebound! Great job! Great job, bud. Really good job. Appreciate you hanging in there with us all weekend. What a weekend. Good job. Thank you.